I love how paint literally gives you a hexagon as well, so you can make your own hexagon very easily. I reckon they added that specifically for World Team League. All right, this is going to be the hexagon of Twitch chat. All right, guys, Twitch chat. Today, your game knowledge is going to come in at an astounding... Do, 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 do. Calculating. Hang on. Can we, get, can we Can you just press 1 in the chat to see if you're here? Because the, the robot needs to calculate who is actually here to see whether you guys are Twitch chat GMs or just the usual Twitch chat people that don't know anything. So you guys can just type in the chat so we can see who's here. Yep, okay, okay. Yep, 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 yep. A absolutely a one, holy shit. We have the absolute lowest of lows of game knowledge in that. <laughs> okay, I'm, so I'm sorry guys, you're all beautiful. You guys are great. But you all type in one, which just makes me feel like you should have a one in the uh, game knowledge as well. <laughs> but what? You told me to type one. Well, shouldn't you shouldn't do what you got told to do, right? Didn't <laughs> you wouldn't jump off a cliff if it said so? Oh, got you guys so good. All right, Reynolds versus Zown. Away we go. Oh, you thermals here. Holy shit! I'm sad I closed. We could have updated it to 0.5. Oh god. You know. The real GMs don't speak up until it's too late. They know they would have tanked the score too much. To be fair, guys, one is um, one is very close to being ten. You're just missing a zero, so you know. We do have ourselves Reynold versus Down then. Uh, important matches, obviously. These two teams at the top of the league, and they would like to stay as close to the top as possible. They have some tough matches in the weeks ahead still. Um, just to kind of run you through the matches still to come for these teams. Alpha X have to play against Team NV, then the Shopify Rebellion, then Sidestorm Gaming, which is a hell of a roster lineup. Kaizy actually have an easier run. They just play Platinum Heroes, SSLT, and then their final match is Dragon Phoenix Damon, which is obviously tough. But yeah, if, if Kaizy could win here, it's very likely they would end up ahead of Alpha X overall in the league. But actually, I guess now they can only win in an ace match, so they would end up, if they won in an ace match, they would end up on the same points as the Shopify Rebellion and Alpha X, just because of the points they stand on right now. But again, then they do have that easier schedule ahead of them for the final few weeks, which should give them a good shot of still finishing in the top couple of spots. I've got to do better than Hexagon. I've got to do a Dodecahedron. Okay, what if, what if, okay, I'm going to blow your minds. What if we did a Venn diagram of hexagons? Oh my god. And and this little shape in here, we'll, we'll fill it in just so you guys can see. This shape in here, this, this crossover equals passion. So the more your hexagons cross over, the more you actually love StarCraft, so... Turns out I actually am just born of two hexagons crossed over with each other. Oh my god. Not symmetrical throughout its end. Oh my god. You know what? You're going to judge my hexagons. I'd rather you guys judge my casting. Jeez. Twitch chat. Back, literally backseat and everything. Man draws hexagons in three seconds on paint. Oh, not sure about that, Wardy. It's not symmetrical. You know what would happen if I spent the time making it symmetrical? Someone in Twitch chat would have been like, Oh, Lordy, there's a paint screen in front of the game. I'm missing this one adept doing jack shit. Oh, so, you know, I can't please you all, okay? Casting 2 out of 10, shit. Shouldn't have asked for that one either. Ay, ay, ay. My casting's not symmetrical? How do you cast symmetrically? Do you have to say the exact same amount of the words for one player as you do the other? Okay. Zaun is building a void ray. Raynor is a good Zerg. The Void Ray is about to finish. Raynor is building two queens. Lol. <laughs> Shit, that's really difficult. Uh, is Void Ray one word or two? One, for sure. No doubt. Just gonna see the Ling's gonna probably get this probe. Blocks the Nexus. That's a nice little catch there for sure. As uh, Reno backs it up with those few zerglings, so a nice little catch, nice little denial. Not a bad at all. So we have an Twilight Council Forge on the way up. Next is building two. So Zion Shun is already that move in toward the probably expectation of just blink stalkers and playing that as the mid game here. 
And we'll see what he can do with them, see what sort of aggression he might be able to find for himself, see how successful he may get this to be. Hey, Woody, tell me you don't want to commentate without saying you don't want to commentate. Well, isn't every time I talk to Twitch chat me basically saying I don't want to talk about the game right now? Literally every time I look at you guys, it's an excuse not to talk about the game. But the good news is I get away with it because that scene is good viewership and, you know, good stream interaction, good chat interaction. That gets you bonus points with, with the people who actually want to sub and be your friend. And then it gets you in trouble for, you know, on our StarCraft and TL.net. I try watching this stream and this man talked to Twitch chat for two whole minutes. I missed the Oracle Revelation being analyzed deeply. Well, I'll tell you what, that Oracle's Revelation lets him see the third base, which lets him watch the drones mine. And it's going to last about 15 seconds before Zhang can no longer watch if drones are still mining on that third base or not. So that is currently going on. I miss upgrade coming up. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm, I'm very meta casting right now. Call, kind of calling out Twitch chat and all of this. I apologize. <laughs> I'll be brutal. <laughs> I'm not even going to read that out, but <laughs> I'm laughing at it. I'm sure you know what. All right. Link's going to run on in here. Just going to be seeing a couple of gateways. Going to be in some trouble. One of them gets cancelled up pretty much immediately. There we go. I've got some hallucinations as I'm moving across. It is a Link. It is plus one, but it's a very fast Robo Bay in second facility. So he's going to move very quickly into the follow-up to this, which is going to be heading towards a whole bunch of disruptors. So moving straight in for that right now. That's going to be our uh, goal for the next little while. Get that disruptor count up and running and see just what we can do. We'll see. Rain oil is not really showing us too much yet. I mean, just roaches. Infestation pit down. I assume we want to go into, like, a fastish hive. And then with the hive, you obviously do open up a few options of what you can get done here. Hive really gives you, especially, I would say, options in towards stuff like a, um, you know, stuff like the, uh, like, vipers would be really nice here. Looks like we're going to go hydras. And, and actually, hydras have been a fairly popular choice lately, but lurkers especially. Guess we'll see if we just brush lurkers off. I, I do feel like a couple of high little uh, vipers would be kind of nice though, right? I feel like that would be a uh, pretty neat way to get set up. Stalkers starting to push. Obviously, generally, these stalkers want to stay fairly aggressive on the map. You've got a few sentries to back it up. We already have the first disruptor out here with this as well. So, in that regard, everything's looking pretty darn good over on this side. So, it's kind of exciting to see in the early stages. Ling's going to go around the top left. Reno already starting to set up some run buys. I mean, one of the very best things Reno is good at is those run buys. Let's see if he can use them to his advantage. He splits a few things forward, and he actually decides not to commit in with them just yet. And that's got Balin Speed starting as well. When that Balin Speed is up, obviously you're going to have a much better time with your run by his Bane's going to be that much deadlier. Uh, we are quite far behind on plus two melee, so we're not going to be on kind of one-shotting probe territory for quite some time. Jesus, that natural expansion of Raynor is like tech heaven. It's the Silicon Valley of Zerg. Every little bit of tech is in there. I mean, if that natural expansion is ever exposed in this game, Reno is going to have to completely tech from the ground up. I think the only thing that's not there is his spawning pool. It's like the entire Sim City is just tech structure after tech structure. Jeez, that's uh, kind of wild. I mean, don't get me wrong, that natural is pretty safe on this map. You know, it's, it's kind of like right in the center of all of his bases, you know, especially the front of the natural. The biggest threat to that natural would be if he loses one side of the map and Zan starts being able to kind of carve in while Reynold goes much later into the game to, like, one side. Like, say he loses the left side, like, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock base, and then he starts just expanding bottom right and defending over there. That's when that might be a problem. Until then, probably not so much. It's unlikely he loses the main to the extent the natural starts coming under fire, so... Yeah. It's gonna be seen, uh, plus one air weapons already coming up from Zaun is... I think he's realizing that this game potential to go long, so 
was getting himself established and set up. We do have plus one flyer attacks coming in. The Adrenal Glands is about to finish. Plus two missiles is coming up as well. His Lings and Danes are going to crash on into a couple of those Zealots here and just going to get these Lurkers burrowed up as we continue to move on through, aiming for a couple of those cannons. Now, here we go on the left-hand side. This is the counterattack that I think Riddle has been waiting to establish as those Banes haven't decided where they're going to connect yet. I think they're just sat nearby. I actually would love to see the Ling Bane run by, so I think this fight's already decided. Reynolds already backing it up for the most part. Show us the freaking Ling Bane, man! I mean, okay, the Lings are still fighting the cannon. What did the Banelings do? Oh, where did the Banelings go? They're on the natural. They, I think they just rolled into a wall on the natural. That's such. That's actually maybe the most frustrating moment I've ever had watching a game of StarCraft 2. Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like literally nothing happened on this right-hand side since the moment we moved over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, the Banes, I think, just rolled into, like, the natural wall or units that were on the natural expansion. So, uh, nothing really too important in the end. But it felt like there was loads of potential there. There was also Disruptors there. I wonder if they got blown up by the Banelings, actually, because there was Disruptors nearby, too. Zell's going to get surrounded in this attack once again. Just going to push pros back. Remember, we're not in plus two melee yet. These Banes are going to go through to... Actually, a couple do hit the natural expansion here. That one cannon has probably got so many kills on it. It has been a real... Uh, it has really just been standing strong in that position for a while. We have more units on this right-hand side. We're actually going to get rid of this Nexus here. Zaun is struggling to defend two bases at the same time. Was that a blink forward? I think it was. Into some lurker fire. It does not really benefit you. Lings are back on the top. My goodness. The the massacre is real. As uh, Reynolds looking very good in this first game. Uh, things are completely under his control. I mean, carries on the way out. I think Reynolds has a spire. So, you know, he's got plus one flyer attack. So he's got a spire if he needs to build Corruptor. So that's not really an issue. He has an answer to that pretty much set up already. So, yeah, not really a problem at all. This does kind of feel as though we're going to have uh, Raynal. I mean, right now, it really feels like he's going to take this first game. But let's see if Zaun can turn it around with the carriers. I think that is his one big hope right here. He's getting a few salts on the map as well, so Raynal's starting to take some damage himself. I mean, that's not been the case so far at all. So, a little bit of a different situation this time. Prison holds a few salts off to the side as well. They will wait to see what they can maybe get done. He's going to start defending these lurkers. Obviously, the problem is we're only on three bases right now. If we can't keep this fourth base back online. Oh, no. Disruptor's kind of dying there to the uh, lurker shots. It's a little bit painful as Bane Ravager continues to rush through this. Continuing to do very well. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, definitely causing problems, no doubt about it. As we... Uh, all the way through this now. It's a little bit of a little quick lag spike. Just uh, get over that for a moment, guys. Sorry. It looks like we're going to be good to resume. Yeah, um, definitely, a, I mean, just a rough few moments for Zaun and still can't get back to four bases. It doesn't really matter the damage he's doing to Raynor. Very superficial in the grand scheme of things based on everything else that's happened. And as the Corruptors come online, I do feel like that's removing the one way in which Raynor probably could have lost this game, which is the carriers getting out of control. With a proper answer to these carriers set up, it doesn't feel like it's going to happen. I mean, that said, it, it is kind of a low army supply. Well, a similar army supply. So, I mean, it's basically this army. Let's see. We get rid of one carrier. No, we don't. We actually turn around. We still don't get it. So, a little bit of a frustration there. For the moment, at least. Trump is now getting chased away. Zaun and Reynolds in about similar army supplies. Reynold has Ravages, and those Biles can do a lot in terms of, well, they hit his own Corruptors right there, but a lot of the time they can do a lot in terms of just sort of buying you time, corrosive Biles, forcing your opponent out of position and stuff like that, right? So, yeah, just uh, a lot of progress to be made in that regard, as we do see these Stalkers still trying to find a way around. Army Supplies are still similar, but Reynold will have so much more rebuilding. And as he's worked his way through the tech of his opponent, he's going to have Lurkers. It's not really a great way to deal with Lurkers. It's like... Well, the answer to Lurkers right now is apparently going to be the um, a couple of Disruptors, but it's just not going to be enough of them for the Lurk account that's starting to come through as well. So it does really feel as though this one is going to be a done deal in the next little bit as Zaun just can't actually bust through this at all. And it just looks as though Reno is going to find himself a 
first game victory here against Zaun. Nicely handled as these corruptors overhead just kind of floating around. Stalkers, immortal, and all sorts gathering up. These lings getting to wrap around with the lurkers to attack. I mean, we've, knew, we've known that Reyno is on the verge of winning this for a little while, guys. This is kind of just our confirmation. Starting to come through and everything. And there we do have the GG. Casey Gaming's Reyno is, for the moment, going to put them towards match point. Even people joining halfway through can't get hit by the ads. I think. I think. I don't know. They changed a few things lately. Anyways, game number two, Bill and Grad is Zaun's map pick, so he chooses for a, a smaller map, and we'll see if that's going to allow him to be maybe more aggressive or so. Definitely will give him a couple of options, so yeah, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Can't lie on the internet, that's impossible. No one's ever lied to me on the internet, actually. Not once. Not a single time. And don't, don't try to lie to me in Twitch chat right now, because I just won't believe it. I wouldn't believe you guys would do that to me. At least you don't get ad-flooded, like, on the DreamHack stream. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I am... I, I try to be very smart about it. Like, I mean, honestly, this month I am running more ads than I've ever run before. And it's, like, a seriously huge amount more, but I feel like we've handled them very well. And guaranteed, we will have less ads next month. I, I can already promise you that. My new deal came in. It doesn't even offer me to run as many ads as I ran this month. Um, so, I'm not sure. I'm still not fully sure if I'm going to take the deal because it's not as good as it is as it was this month either. So, I'm not 100% sure on just taking it or not taking it or, or what I should do. But, um, yeah, the, the main story is that it's not going to be as many ads and should 100% be gone completely the days of being like oh my god there might be ads during the game like it has been this month because it, it should just be way more manageable unless we get like super long games Reynolds feeling is coming across the map early to apply some pressure off this pool first let's see if you can get something done here Zealot and a few probes already out as Reynold moves through. He's going to look for a surround and just try to get some damage done. He's actually going to... I feel like he forced the uh, units into a pretty cool position for himself there, but couldn't quite find the op option to kind of commit through on it, so nothing really comes of it just yet. The Stalker moving back around. Just going to be having the probe continue to move down to the south as well. So glad I'll be over with some of the streamers after this month. Yeah? Has it been bad? I know, like, a lot of streamers have started to run ads more, but, like, like I say, I, I'm running a lot more ads than most people are. So, to me, I feel like... I, I Like I say, I feel like I've done pretty okay with my ads. There's been, like, a couple times where I... Well, there's, like, one time when I first had delay when I screwed up the ads, and yesterday was the first time we really had trouble that was outside of my control because we just had two very long games back-to-back. I feel like people who typically people have to run like half the ads of me, and I feel like if you have to run half the ads of me, I feel like that'd be such a walk in the park that I don't see how you could mess it up. So, I don't know. I guess it just depends. I mean, maybe you just don't like watching ads in general, so. Anyways, Dark Shrine coming up as we get going. This, uh, it's going to be a bit different, of course, then from Zaun with the Dark Shrine opening. Some DTs into some Archons, and. This is not something that's super popular in Europe. I only really used by... I would say Geralt is the one player I see using this the most. Depth Shades into the main base. We get the score to protect the drone. And that's a pretty good start here on the side of Raynor defending nicely, killing off the Adept. That's just really about figuring out the fact that this is a Dark Shrine. No Robo Facility, right? So no Warp Prism or anything. Just super fast Dark Shrine rush at the moment. So you see now Lang is moving away to the left side. A few of the Adepts coming through. And I was just going to be seeing the... Uh, I mean, again, the whole idea here is you're trying to fake out the idea of this is going to be an Adept attack, and then the DTs show up. Reynold does not currently have detection. This is looking pretty bad for him. 
With no detection, he is likely in just trouble here. It's not impossible to get spores up on the fly, but you're going to take damage in the process. Now, this is going to be rough. He is starting to build one spore at least. Okay. The DTs have to walk across the map as well, by the way. So that's actually going to give Reno the time he needs to get set up, I think. He sees that this is not glaives or anything. So at this point, I think he's thinking, well, what else can this actually be right now? No spore in the main base. That's the one place he doesn't have one. He does have a wall of queens on the third. What does he have on the natural? Because obviously it's not just spores. He needs units to defend the DTs as well. He's got nothing on the natural, but he is having a run by on the third base of his opponent. He's actually going to kill the stalker there. He's going to get the cancel on the third base. It's a kill, not a cancel. I imagine Zaun is looking at the DTs across the map. The drones have surrounded one DT. Where did the others go up in the main base? No spore crawler there, so Reno will start to lose a lot of drones. The drone damage is ramping up a little bit. That spore in the main going to take damage. It looks like we're going to move the spore from the natural to the main base. Use that as detection for a little while here. We're going to have the queens to help protect it, so we're just going to be very safe about this. That one DT getting pushed off to the side. It's going to be 46 workers each. I think this would have been okay for Zaun if he hadn't lost his third, and not just lost it, but like straight up killed. So 300 minerals down the drain. Again, because all of his investment early in this game has been in those DTs, so he has nothing really behind this. Right? He's only just now starting up his first Twilight upgrade of the game. So it's not like he has any other tech to really work with right now or anything along those lines. That makes this feel a little bit rough, honestly. That, that's got me feeling a little bit uh, concerned. You get that final DT that was still alive in the main. I'm going to say that Reynold recovered from this pretty decently. Having the first spores up was a massive aid because otherwise he's going to continue losing drones in the natural and third. And he wouldn't have had a spore to bring into the main. I mean, that might have just lost him the game if he didn't have any spores ready at all. The biggest issue is no spore available in the main base, which, yeah, I think is it was costly, but like I say, not too bad. This DT sneaks back in for a couple kills and gets straight back out. But basically just... I mean, we're basically just pending a, uh... I mean, we're basically just pending a set of fights or trades here, which is... If Zaun can get in and get a couple of de drones, then brilliant. But he needs to do something to slow Reynolds down. Because Reynold, he's got a lot of units now. Bane that's finishing up. And he's going to get his own fourth base down. Although DT, that's straight away. I, I do like what Zaun's doing. His DT usage has been pretty thorough so far. He's doing a good job of it. Really making the absolute most of the situation. The Nexus down over to the right hand side. Let's so see a few stalkers blinking around here as well. Nothing too serious just yet. Just gonna be seeing a, a little bit of a surround potential coming in though. I mean, the sentries for force fields are nice. If you don't get surrounded from the other side too, the other road is getting forward. At the very least here, the sentries die, right? As we are going to run out of lings. Uh, a few extra lings coming in as well. And now there's not going to be any force fields available. This Roach Ravager force continues to push across the map. Just going to be seeing a couple of adepts on the counter getting dealt with. And Reynor is going to pull back from his chase down. He's only on 65 drones. Do we get worried right now that the drone count is maybe not quite where it wants to be for Reynor? Is that becoming an issue? Or is this going to turn out to be okay? I don't think I'm too worried just yet. I think I'm kind of fine with the situation as it stands, but uh, we're definitely kind of getting to a point where he maybe needs to take a more, kind of, a, a better approach to it, I suppose, overall. I guess is the way to say it. We'll continue to push on forward. He's going to go for it. So yeah, if he doesn't run drone, I guess you do just attack, and his bay is trying to find their way into the center of the stalkers. Now, stalkers aren't... The greatest unit to use your bane lanes on. Oh my goodness, there is a ton of probes that get caught there. A couple of battles, and I think that third base is going to die. I was going to say, they're not the greatest units to use your bane lanes on. However, there is that sort of situation, right, where it's like, oh, you can actually kind of get in here, do some damage, right? You know, there's definitely some possibilities, because then it weakens the stalkers and everything else can get on top of them. Looks as though Reyno is about to take us to the ace match here. As he is going to come through with, I mean, just so many units running into the natural. 27 probes died. The third is dead. There's a fourth up on the right side. Uh, so maybe that's somewhere you can go to. But, I mean, Zaun's army supply is minimal. Lings are surrounding stalkers. And 
Yeah, that's not ideal. There's actually a few Zelts on the top that are going to do well against the few Lings that are there. That's somewhere where Reynor might have to kind of move away from. As these few Roaches in the Natural are going to continue to help out and just trade as best he can on the tail end of this. And if Reynor just goes again with another round of units, he should be able to do this without really many issues at all. I think he's going to be absolutely fine on this one. And Reynor is going to be able to grab himself a, uh, like I say, the potential to play in the Ace match here. And that is rather exciting. The ace match coming on through. Very exciting indeed. One final map of today's World Team League. Definitely been a, a great set of games. Very exciting matches. And uh, yeah, that's why World Team League is awesome. Going all the way to the ace. And I don't really know who to expect from the aces either. I think especially from Alpha X, I think we see Raynor as an ace player. But Raynor plus who else, right, is, is kind of the question. Reno gets the W, but who will he end up playing against? I just do not know. Like, I'm not super crazy. That is something he said. He did start studying. It's just, it's not had as much of an impact as he thought it might, I guess. Will IEM be live this year? IEM was live the last, uh, this year already, in March, in February. So, yeah, it will be live again in a year to come, next year, too. As we have got Probe already heading down to the bottom side of the map, and away we go. As we get into some early commitment here from Zound to Scout, again, here we are. Game number seven. This was kind of, I, I I don't know, I, I actually, I was going to say it's the ace match we were kind of expecting. Again, for me, I don't know if it necessarily was. I think this might have been the ace match, which I'm not, like, super shocked to see, but I, I feel like maybe you could have mixed it up and maybe possibly built a, uh, maybe possibly picked a, uh, Ragnarok here just to try and get a little ZVZ cheese or something going, but no. especially when Zaun just got too owed by Raynor, you know, that feels like it's like, oh man, like, you just got too owed, that's gotta feel kind of bad, right? Um, so yeah, I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll find out for ourselves in just a few how exactly this is gonna pan out. Here in this game, number seven, ace match territory. Very exciting stuff here. Very, very exciting indeed, guys. We just get ourselves into this final map and see whether we can pull off something cool. And Zam finally get himself a W here, or is that just asking for a little bit too much? Is Reynold just that little bit too good in this situation? Yeah, very possible. It's, uh, it's tough to beat Reynold. And like I say, I feel like already being 2 0, Reynold was a player who can absolutely clutch it out, but sometimes really feeds off confidence as well. He's a very confident guy, so if you, feed, if you feed into his confidence, if he feels good, if he believes he's playing well, then a lot of the time it feels like he's only going to continue to do better, right? So I definitely think that's a. Uh, a little bit of a factor in this too. If I'm uh, if I'm Reno's opponent, I feel kind of bad that he's had the chance to already establish a little bit of a uh, a little bit of confidence and momentum in essentially what's kind of a best of five right now. But a best of five where Zaun only needs to win one of the maps. Uh, Curious Minds is a map as well. We see that Robo opening, so I feel like Zaun might try and do the Zaun special, which is to play that... Uh, the Zaun special is, is kind of the Zaun build. If you're not aware of it, it's kind of Robo first. You go into a Robo Bay, you build a couple Disruptors and Disruptor Drop, and then one Colossus and you two base all in. Sometimes you can go for a different variation where you take a third base off of the Colossus coming up, and then your opponent's preparing for two base all in. They're expecting you to be aggressive, and you're not, and then they're like, oh crap, what the hell do I do now? And Things get a little bit messy, uh, so that's a possibility if he wants to mix it up here, but, I mean, really is kind of everything just up in the air at the moment. We'll see exactly what he wants to do. Only time will tell. There's not really a good way to read into which of those variations it's going to be, as far as I'm aware, until Zaun kind of just decides, right, I'm dropping a third Nexus down, or I'm just going to build those units and go. So, yeah, a little bit of waiting to see, but for the moment, it is that kind of expectation. Oh, it's a Twilight Council already, so he's already setting up to the future here. 
this is going to be uh, a follow-up to this rather than anything else. So there you go, a little bit of confirmation that we are going to see something along those lines at least uh, in terms of continuing beyond this and not just fully focusing on the robo-based all-in. Healing's trying to get to the uh, watchtower there, unable to make it just yet. As do you have the blink starting up as well. It's going to be seeing a couple of adepts going to start poking through. Guys, I get the feeling that I might just try and sneak onto StarCraft just so I can be in game on the Nation Wars match just for when it starts. Um, just so I don't miss out on uh, like the game. Like, we can just basically jump straight from this event into Nation Wars. So I think I'm just going to ask you guys to forgive me for stuff showing up over the screen for just a few moments here. And uh, just because it should allow a smoother viewing from here on out, basically. So it'll just be a few moments of basically uh, StarCraft overtaking my Chrome page. And that should be it. That should be all we need to do. Oh, I might have to tap in to turn the music and the sounds off for a second, but that should really be about all we have to do. Let's hop in and do that quickly. Oh, and actually maybe join the lobby, I guess. Just going to double check that worked, and then we'll stop tapping in and out, guys. Looks good. All right, just so we can go straight into that uh, match when this is finished up without any issues and stuff, right? Let's see what we would like to do. Makes sense, if you ask me at least. Uh, yeah, Prism is moving around with a couple of disruptors. And just going to be seeing if it can find damage. That's generally what you're trying to do here. And eventually, this is cool because it moves into, like, Blink Disruptor. Uh, and it's going to be just a two-base all-in. Now, Reynold 50 Drones is a comfortable position. He's making a lot of lings. I love that because I really feel like the lings are exactly what you want in this situation. Like, the lings really feel as though they push you exactly where you want to be. They're going to give you the units that you want to be working with. I mean, nothing's good against Lings in this army. If the Lings can wrap around this... Yeah, I mean, you can blink out of the first Lings surround, but then the second... Then the Lings are fast enough to kind of cause a second surround. And Disruptor Shot is going to completely miss. We're going to start warping in Zealots. The Disruptor was actually really important, because what the Disruptor has done is it forced the Prism to be far enough back. Uh, sorry, it forced the Ravagers to be far enough away from the Prism that the Prism couldn't just get taken down. Immediately, that Disruptor gets denied. That's the last Disruptor as well. By the way, we die for it. He does lose some Ravagers. It's not going to be enough. Reno has absolutely crushed this. Absolutely no issue at all. No problem. Coming through with the Ling. Still chasing down Stalkers. Having a great time of it. And it looks as though this one is going to be pretty much decided, honestly, guys. Not really much else to add. Reno looking way too freaking powerful in this best of seven. Makaisi Gaming. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Zaun really tried to throw everything at Reno as well. Like, he tried so many different things. And not a single one has worked out, right? It's coming out of this now. Renor still five workers ahead. Army supply looking great. Rebuilding the ravages that he lost out on. And, uh, yeah, I, I really feel as though this right now is... Yeah, you can see Zan's even going to recall away from this position. I mean, you're recalling while two base all inning. That's that's never a good sign. Renor's sneaking his way up into lair tech. He's getting his extra drones out. Melee upgrade, Bane Nest. He's taken enough of a lead that this isn't risky anymore. It's just something he can do comfortably, so... Yeah, really just looking good across the board right here is Raynor. Looking fantastic and, uh, yeah, just looking very, very confident in this game number seven. Looking to take Kaizy to the victory. Like I say, it's going to be kind of funny because Kaizy and Alpha X will be tied on points. And it's really going to come down to the next few weeks on who will end up ahead of the other. But Kaizy Gaming do have an easier roster of, play of teams still left to play. But, uh, Disruptor Shot hits a couple of Queens. The problem is with hitting Queens is you need a second Disruptor to kill them off. So it doesn't really result in any proper damage. Reno is still pushing this army of sound back repeatedly right now. Yeah, this is just not going anywhere, unfortunately. Not really much else to add as we do have our Lings. Our Ravagers still coming through. A couple of Vials going in for the Disruptors, but... Yeah, they don't really connect. Zaun trying his best to take the, the right kind of fights here. It's another disruptor shot that hits maybe a couple of lings or so. The Prism actually taking some shots. It came forward there. And Reno's losing quite a few lings, but 
again, as supplies kind of arguably get a bit closer, you've also got to look at the fact that Raynor for the first time in this game has really been drawn and attacking. He's about half plus one melee. His road speed and bane speed's on the way, so his army is 100% getting stronger as well. And it's not like he's like desperately holding on for those upgrades. Those upgrades are just coming through over time here. And that prism is getting lower and lower, more and more danger. Every single time we see it, it feels like at this point, it is not looking good to stay alive at all, honestly. It's not looking good to stay alive at all. Has to be extremely cautious with it now, because the moment that disruptor goes down, you lose your reinforcements. You lose the disruptors if they're inside of it as well, of course. The sound is starting at third base behind this, just in case he can maybe transition, but again... The reason he can maybe get to a third base is because reno has been teching himself. Here comes the massive balance. The prism goes down with the disruptors inside from the queen shots. GG says down three losses in a row, and Raynor is going to take it to bring it back for Kaizi Gaming. Oh, he's going to have an intense lean-in.